domes are an amazing visual opportunity for anyone who enjoys drawing architecture. As a structure, we can view them from below looking up, we can look down on them from above. They can be rather plain, or they can be extremely decorative. They can be the main event in our drawing, or they can sit in the background. They can be a platform for holding statues and lanterns. They can sit on extravagant decorated drums. We can draw them inside out and they always add drama to a skyline. Being able to draw domes well opens up a rich subject matter for our urban landscapes. So let me explain to you a few crucial things I've come to understand about domes and then the techniques I consciously use every time I draw them. So the first observation is that a dome is the top half of a sphere. Now this next part is a really important thing to realise. This will really help you draw domes more accurately. So here we have the same object, a cube. How the cube looks depends on where you're standing and it greatly affects what we see and therefore what we draw. But when we think about spheres, it's different. The thing about a sphere is that every point of the surface is the same distance from the centre as every other point on the surface. Which means whatever angle we view our sphere from, it always looks like a sphere. And this fact is very important when we draw domes. Here we have a series of domes on drums. In the first one, we're looking straight at this dome. Our eye level is here on the collar of the drum. I've drawn the other half of the sphere. It's not that it's really there inside the drum, but just so we can see how the total shape is of the sphere. In our next dome, the drum is taller, so we're looking up more at our dome. And what we can see is that we see less of the actual dome. But when we look at our cutaway section, we can see that the total sphere is still there. Our third example, the drum is higher still. We're looking up more. And again, we can therefore see less of the dome. Our cutout view shows that the entire sphere is still there. What we see is still part of a perfect circle. And when we get to our fourth example, where the drum is very tall, if it were much taller, we wouldn't see any of the dome. But we can see still that that part of the dome that we do see still forms part of a perfect circle. And by understanding this and remembering this, when we draw domes, we can get a much more accurate curve because we know that we're looking for a perfect circle portion. That's as long as the dome was a semi-sphere to begin with. Because many domes are like this. Here we have the drum and we have a, an architectural collar and here we have the dome. But in fact, the top of the dome has been lengthened slightly so that the supports are better able to take a weight on top. Now this may be a lantern. This is in fact called a lantern. They would let daylight into the structure. Even when the dome has been stretched upwards, the perfect circle remains. And I always find it very helpful firstly to observe the perfect circle and then to look to see how much more do I have to add to the top of it. It's one thing to look at diagrams such as this, but do we really see this in real life? Here we have an example from Paris and you can see how this view corresponds with looking up in one of these more extreme angles. To make it a little clearer, I've prepared a simplified diagram. And here it's become very clear that while we only see a section of the dome, it forms part of a perfect circle. It forms part of the circular silhouette of the sphere of which this dome is a half portion of. Can you see how incredibly helpful it is that when I'm drawing this curve here, if I know it is a portion of a full circle. I hope you can see what I'm talking about here. Now that we know that in every circular dome there is a circle, learning to draw circles and half circles or portions of circles is clearly one of the more important skills to develop. I find it easier to always divide my circles into quarters. If I were wanting to draw a dome on top of this drum, 
always locate the halfway point as well as I can. And then I'm aware that the dome has to come up this far. And it might even be helpful to put a point to show that because that gives me something to aim my line at. I also know, although I wouldn't draw these in an ink drawing, although I might if I did a pencil underlining, I can draw this square and my quarter circle is going to sit in this. And I know I want to just touch it there and there. And then this distance also needs to come out for the furthest point of my circle. And there we have my quarter circle half the dome if you like. Now for most people it's easier to draw curves in certain directions and that usually depends on whether we're right or left-handed. But a very simple trick to draw more accurately in the directions that we find naturally more difficult, which for me is here, is simply to turn our paper so that we make the curve on this side another easier direction. I'll complete the curve. And for me, that's the simplest way to do a freehand dome. If I'm drawing directly in ink only, I won't draw this framework, but I will think of it in my mind as I draw. So now we want to put into practice the things we've learned. The first thing I do is to define the size of the drum. And I like to just make sure that I've got a horizontal point. I can see that this line is slight arch. So there's the base now drawn for the dome and now for the dome itself. And so it's going to come up here and here. And again, we want to make sure that our lines actually lift straight up and don't angle too quickly when we draw them. There is a perfect circle in here. The dome is stretched slightly at the top to support the weight of the lantern. And so I'm looking at this distance from here to here in relation from here to here. Now, the base of the dome, this is this ellipse. And if you like, the center of the dome is here. That's the center of the half circle. So this distance and this distance is where we're going. So what I'm going to do now is to turn my page so that the curve going the other way is still on the easy side for me. There I have my dome. And now I need to put on the lantern. Checking this, I can see that there is a there is a, a line here just before the top of the dome changes direction. And now we'll just add some of the other details. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found that helpful. Domes are a great asset in our drawing. They add so much interest and the roundness and the curves often creates a real variety in the sorts of elements that we've drawn. And they look so great against a skyline. As you always hear me say, the reason much of our drawing looks inaccurate is not because we've lacked the technical skill to draw it, but because we've failed to observe carefully what it is we're drawing. So I hope that what we've looked at in this video has provided help in how to view domes and therefore to have a better chance of more accurately drawing them. And the important thing is to have fun while you learn. I'll see you next time. Bye.